All right, welcome to the commission meeting of September 12th, uh, 2023. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Manager McGill, if you could call the roll, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioner Flynn? Present. Commissioner Grella? Here. Commissioner Ranney? Here. Commissioner Swagger Wilson? Here. Commissioner Silverman? Here. All right, let's see. Next on the agenda, if you could, uh, Manager McGill, if you could read the manager's announcements and the summary of discussion session topics, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, earlier tonight, Commission met in discussion session and received information and discussed the following items. We heard an update on the Cedar Salem intersection improvements and bid considerations. We received information on field work performed by Gateway Engineers for the installation of new sidewalk segments at several different locations. Um, that information will be proofed. There were some questions re uh, or changes requested by the commission. Uh, and then once that is ready, we will post that to the municipal website. We also heard a presentation. <laughs> heard a presentation on the 2024-2028 capital improvement program projects. Uh, and we heard a review of activities of various boards from their commission liaisons. Prior to that discussion session, the commission met an executive session to receive legal advice from the solicitor on a variety of topics. The next regular meeting of the commission will be held on Tuesday, September 26, 2023, and that meeting will begin at 8 p.m. in this room. Here are the ways the public can participate in person. You don't need to pre-register. Simply show up at the appropriate meeting time, and if you wish to speak, during the meeting, please sign the sign-in sheet at the back of the room uh, or remotely via the Zoom webinar format. And again, you don't need to pre-register. Simply click the link located on the meeting agenda on the municipal website. If you wish to speak during citizens' comments or during public hearings, simply use the raise hand feature on Zoom and you'll be notified when it is your turn to speak. Thank you. Uh, next, community highlights. Commissioner Vice President Squagger Wilson, please. Thank you, Mr. President. September is the eighth annual Love Your Library campaign for the Mount Lebanon Public Library. Thanks to the very generous support of the Jack Buncher Foundation, every gift up to $500 made to Mount Lebanon Public Library and other Allegheny County libraries during the month of September will be matched. Donate on the library webpage at mountlebanonlibrary.org. Each year from September 15th through October 15th, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. The observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period. It was enacted into law on August 17, 1988. The day of September 15th is significant because it is the anniversary of independence for Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. In addition, Mexico and Chile, Chile celebrate their independence days on September 16th and September 18th, respectively. Also, Columbus Day, which is October 12th, falls within this 30-day period. This year, we focus on the themes of prosperity, power, and progress, recognizing the significant strides of Hispanics in the economic, political, and social growth of the U.S. under the theme, Latinos Driving Prosperity, Power, and Progress in America. Hispanic Heritage Month is an incredible opportunity to speak with one voice, acknowledge the crucial role that Hispanics play in shaping the future of our country and the world, and to celebrate and recognize Latinos as employees, suppliers, consumers, and community. We are grateful for all of your contributions. Thank you for making Mount Lebanon a better place. Coffee with a Cop is at 9 a.m. this Thursday at Orbis. This is your opportunity as citizens to come meet your Mount Lebanon policemen, have one-on-one -on -one conversations, get your, your questions answered, and find out more about what they do day-to-day. -day. 
9 a.m. this Thursday at Orbis. I'll see you there. The Mount Lebanon Partnership will present the annual Artist Market on Saturday, September 30th and Sunday, October 1st from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Academy Avenue lot. Enjoy beautiful juried art for sale, including two-dimensional work, jewelry, wood sculpture, glass, ceramics, fiber, wearables, mixed media, leather, and metal. Family will also love the food trucks and music. Admission is free. Details at mountlebopartnership.org. And our thanks to the Mount Lebanon Partnership, who have become a very valuable asset to our community. That's all. And thank you for that report. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, our junior commissioner, welcoming her first time in, in the season here. Junior Commissioner Sarah Hudak, please come on down. Um, I want to start by introducing myself. My name is Sarah Hudak. Um, I'm a senior at the high school, and I'm excited to be this the first semester junior commissioner. Um, and I'm happy to be able to share some of the things going on that with our students. Um, at high school. So some might already know that Mount Lebanon was ranked the fourth best public school in the Pittsburgh area um, in 2023. And as a student, I can clearly see why. No worries. Um, <laughs> I can clearly see why we are ranked so highly. Um, and one of the reasons is because of the new programs and opportunities that are always offered and consistently changing at the high school. And I want to talk about one of the new ones, the newest ones, is we are introducing a school-wide student leadership curriculum. This will take place in a homeroom once per month um, and will be student-led by the homeroom representatives. Um, and this is just great for students to be able to gain those leadership skills that they can use um, in their four years of high school as well as life um, long. Um, and then some other fun things that are coming up are voting for homeroom representatives, as well as finalizing club submissions. So we have over 75 clubs and activities that students can get involved in at the high school, um, which is great for students, you know, to not only just get engaged academically, um, but to build those connections with their peers as well. So thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for any resident to express an opinion on any topic pertaining to local government. The commission enjoys hearing from the public on various issues and learning about items to address in the future. If you have specific questions, we will try and answer them at the end of your comments. If we can't, we commit to getting you the answers as soon as possible. When I call your name, please come to the podium to address the commission. Please state your name and address for the record. In fairness, we ask each speaker to share their thoughts for five minutes. The community is as good as each person in this room and online. We work together to make this a community we can all be proud of, and we hope the dialogue remains respectful. We also appreciate the audience's efforts to refrain from any behavior that is disruptive or might intimidate free speech. First on the list, Andrea Fitting. Andrea Fitting, 836 Ridgeview Drive. I apologize for being underdressed for the commission meeting. <laughs> if I had known, I would have worn my power suit. <laughs> However, um, I'm just <laughs> I'm just here to express support for sidewalks on Woodland Drive. Ridgeview, where I live, is adjacent, and um, we walk that neighborhood all the time. My daughter has recently moved back to the neighborhood. She was grew up in Mount Lebanon, went to foster school. <clears throat> At that time, we lived on the other side of Connor Road. So it was really dangerous for her to go to school. But now we live on the correct side of Connor Road, which is great. Um, however, Woodland Drive is a real menace without sidewalks for two really big reasons. One is there's a lot of traffic and people do not <clears throat> um, obey the speed limit there. They drive pretty fast and it's a windy road. And the other thing is there are a lot of trades people that are parked on both sides of that street all the time. So the visibility is terrible. Um, you have to walk obviously in the street and when the trucks are parked uh, adjacent to the lawns, it makes it extra difficult to not be in the you know traffic zone when you're walking on that street. So that's really all I wanted to say. I wanted to make sure that you knew um, what it's like to live in that neighborhood. Great, yeah. thank you for your okay. thoughts, appreciate it. Next on the list, Colonel Hoon.
Bill Hearn, 456 Coolidge Avenue. About three or four weeks ago, an Upper St. Clair commissioner was addressing some of their residents. And he said, and I quote, we don't want to be like Mount Lebanon. That's a rather stunning statement. I've lived here 60 years and uh, 40 of those years, almost all communities wanted to be like Mount Lebanon because we were such a tremendous community. Everybody uh, wanted to own a home here, live here, uh, enjoy life here. And now it seems that nobody does. <laughs> Last summer I was talking to two contractors, one from Peters Township and the other one from Dormont, and I said, uh, they do a lot of work in Mount Lebanon, enjoy making money here. I asked them if they'd be interested in moving here and they both said, no way. We love working here, but we don't wanna live here. We live in communities that everybody's friends. Mount Lebanon, nobody seems to be. Okay. I was walking down the street, the other side, down this way. Um, this was last Thursday. Coming up to the light at Royers, right on the corner there, this end. Two young girls on the sidewalk. Um, one looked to be a little older than the other one, but I'd say 10 to 12 for both of them. Well, they decided they were going across the street. They looked both ways, evidently clear, took off. The big one made it. The little one got halfway through the first lane on that side of the street, took another look, and then jumped back on the sidewalk just in time for an SUV to go flying through. If she had continued on her path, she would have been hit. Luckily, we, she was smart enough not to do that. When I got on the other side of the street, I said to them, don't do that again. You make awfully sure that there's no traffic coming either way you go with the signals. Now, I know that's not proof of anything, but you need to be a little more cautious. We do get people hit on Washington Road. Now, I was approached today by a senior citizen, a woman who uh, uh, does a lot of miles in the community. She was telling me about how she was walking up Cochrane Road to Bar Hill, and there's a light there that has a left-hand turn arrow. Well, she doesn't like that because she said, that's a real quick light, everybody ignores it. She stepped into the street, she's counting cars, four cars got through legally. And then she said it turned red and I thought everything was good take one more step and everything is not good. So I jumped back right away. One car went through and then a second car immediately after the first one. She said they were both running the light <clears throat> and that light needs adjusted. I said, you know, Tuesday, Thursday night, second Tuesday, fourth Tuesday, why don't you come on up to the commissioner's meeting, say something about it. She said, Ah, I've lived here a long time. I don't see that the commission does much of anything. So she wanted to talk to me. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Next on the list, Tyler Love. Hello, everybody. Um, Tyler Love, 361 Old Gilkeson Road. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, appreciate you hearing my comments last last meeting. We were out of town, could not be here in person. Um, with all due respect to the colonel's comments, there we moved here because of Mount Lebanon. We moved here to raise our child in a neighborhood, a safe environment, a friendly environment, and with the approval, the full consideration for the approval for Black Oak Hill in its current form is putting our family in danger. Um, I know you guys heard last time, and I don't know if these comments resonated, the fact that I don't know if anybody drove by and tried to attempt what I tried to attempt multiple times over the last several months. That turn is going to be impossible. 31 cars, I think, is it a day? Is that what you got determined? Um, yes. Okay, 31 cars a day Division, coming just in. Just off. If you don't no, well, 31 coming in. Excuse me, ramp. excuse me. He's just a oh, okay. I, well, I, I had to verify that. It was 31 a day coming in off of Gilkeston Road, six feet from our fence. I understand that they own that land behind our house, the buffer between Gilkeston Road and ours. However, they have no frontage on old Gilkeston. They don't even have access, no sidewalks, nothing like that. I get it because of the drainage. And they're going to put a sidewalk in behind. Um, but again, that that on-ramp being six feet from where my child plays is terrifying. And we are considering moving out of the district because one, we probably, you know, don't want to overspend from what we got our house for. <laughs> so it's not worth it for us to stay here. Um, we also don't have access to safe walking to our school now. We walked him, he just started kindergarten last week, pester us, pester us to walk. We didn't really want to. We don't have access to a stairwell that used to be there behind the condominium complex that it's at the end of our street that would take us right up to the street that leads us to his school. Inglewood. Inglewood, yeah. Instead, we have to walk down, walk down a hill that is, there's no stairs on, almost fall into the road and walk all the way up Cedar. And along Cedar at that time of day, there are many cars that are parked on the sidewalk. So that forces us to go into the road, <clears throat> around, and then all the way up Bead Lane. And again, I said last week, too, with, with the sidewalk being put in behind our house that goes nowhere, um, I get it for the development, could pull people around the corner to go to Cedar. However, it's pointless. It's just going to bring more people that walk down our street, walk down that sidewalk, have nowhere to go because there's a giant forest in between us and the next sidewalk access, which is at the end of the old Gilkeson. They will come through our yard. We have a child and they're not gonna know any better. I'm not gonna blame the people. However, this development's gonna make it easier for them to come onto our property, walk up our driveway. We have it now and there's just grass there. It's creating an access. Um, all we ask is that the consideration was taken to move the driveway more than six feet from our fence have some compassion for some people that have lived here and wanted to move here for years. Finally did. And that's, that's all I ask is if it can be reworked. I mean, there were zoning. I get it. It's all done legally. However, not morally. The fact that they gave us five feet from our property line, which we only f own five feet off of our house, is a total of 10 feet. The other side is 35. And I understand that, oh, they couldn't do it with the split lots. They had to do it that way. No, you could have either not put nine in and had eight and not let greed absolutely take over. Instead, they chose to put nine and give us 10 feet from our house. I get that Mount Lebanon's a close district and all of that stuff. However, it did not need to be done in this circumstance. If this was done in any other part of Mount Lebanon, try to throw this in next to the manor. Try to throw this in next to Sunset Hills. It's not happening. You're not getting that close to your neighbor with new construction. We're going to be dealing with it for years. I just ask that you all took that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, next, Laura Love. All right, okay. No problem. Um, 
Next, Julie Rios. 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 Thank you for letting me speak. My name is Julie Rios. I live at 50 Woodland Drive. I'm here also to advocate for sidewalks on Woodland. I moved to this community two years ago um, as a physician transplant to Pittsburgh. I lived in a wonderful community similar to this that had walking neighborhoods. All the kids walked to school. My kids would walk out in the front yard, always on the sidewalks. And I love the idea of moving to a community where my kids would be on sidewalks. Unfortunately, that's not the case. People, kids, cars fly up the driveway. Um, I'm sorry, up the street. Um, one time during a snowstorm, there was multiple cars in my front yard and none of them actually lived in our neighborhood. So there's a big cut through. So a lot of times people fly through. Um, there are a lot of hidden turns. There's a lot of blind spots. Um, I also, when I drive my children to school, they are like, oh, there's all my friends walking and they're sad. So they're also not getting the same experience that other children are getting. I think this is a wonderful community um, and I love to advocate and say, this is great. And I think um, the walking district is great. I think it's good exercise for our children, but I think all the kids should have a safe pathway to school. Um, I also think all residents should have a safe pathway to like walk their animals. Um, I've seen many times on the um, bend between Woodland and Terrace where I've had to jump with my dogs into the grass because people fly around those curves. And so it's just very unsafe. And this is definitely a place that we need um, sidewalks. Um, and I thank you for the time tonight. Thank you for your thoughts. Um, next, Sharon McCarthy. Hi, I'm Sharon McCarthy. I'm a resident of 436 Duquesne Drive. And I've lived there for 28 years, and that is off of Cedar Boulevard. So I have walked Cedar Boulevard three to five times a week for most of those 28 years. And I drive up and down Cedar Boulevard um, several times a day. And when for until the last probably four to five years, um, the speed limit on that road was always enforced. And something has changed. <laughs> and it's a speedway now, especially late in the afternoon. Um, I am su in support of all of the proposed changes that were discussed at the meeting tonight. I think they're all very necessary. Um, I have been almost hit by a car in that crosswalk monthly, if not weekly. I can tell you Saturday night, I had a car speed up trying to beat me through the crosswalk. <laughs> they were more than a block away when I started the crossing. Um, I've had cars drive into oncoming, swerve in oncoming traffic so they wouldn't have to slow down while I'm in the crosswalk. I mean, it's it's insane, but what's going on right now, but I have been in support of everything that was discussed. I also understand that any construction isn't gonna happen until at least the spring. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking that some temporary measures be put in place until then. Um, there are, and I'd start with, in, forcing the speed limit. I mean, there are many times I start across that crosswalk and I realize the car's going 40 or 45 miles an hour. They couldn't, they see me, but they can't stop in time. They're going so fast. And I would say the average speed on that road is 35 to 40 miles an hour all day long. When there's soccer going on on Saturday mornings, when there's baseball tournaments and cars going in and out of that lot at Dixon, it doesn't matter. On Sunday afternoon, when there's light traffic, the average speed limit's easily 50 miles an hour. I mean, it's, and that's a 25 mile an hour speed limit. Um, I taught, my kids learned to drive. The one rule I drilled in their head seven or eight years ago was don't go over 30 on that road. You will get a ticket. Because in those days, you would get a ticket. Something has changed. So I think we can make everybody a lot safer at that crosswalk if we find a way to enforce the speed limit. I know that these measures that are proposed are more long-term, more strategic, not as tactical, don't involve you know, uh, manpower, the police force. But until then, whatever we can do, and the flashing, the temporary signs you get that you put up, you tell drivers how fast they're going and to slow down. 
I've seen a little box just nailed to a telephone pole that flashes what people's, or, you know, your oncoming speed and or a reminder that the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. The people that drive through Mount Lebanon from Bethel Park or Upper St. Clair, they just assume the speed limit on that road is 40 miles an hour. And that's what they drive. I've seen people run the red light because they're going so fast, the light at Horseman and Cedar, they're going so fast, they don't have time to stop. And there's a ton of pedestrian traffic there as well. So um, I just will reiterate my support for everything that was discussed and will ask for temporary measures until that can be done. And the one thing I would not support is waiting until Cedar Boulevard is repaid. Because I'm not sure I'm going to be lucky enough for that many more years <laughs> in that crosswalk to, with cars swerving and um, speeding up, trying to beat me through the crosswalk. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Uh, next on the list, uh, Paul Seifkin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm Paul Sipkin, 19 Woodland Drive, uh, and I'm here to speak on behalf of uh, sidewalks for Woodland Drive. Um, my wife has been advocating for this for quite some time, and she has a lot more details. I'd like to add a little bit of a personal uh, sort of uh, angle to that, you know, we moved here 10 years ago. Again, the idea that Mount Lebanon was a walking district was uh, very attractive to us. Uh, within the first week or so, we decided that we needed to negotiate with our backdoor neighbor so that our children could cross through their yard in order to get to Terrace Drive and walk safely to school. Um, that was 10 years ago. And I think we've been advocating for sidewalks ever since. Um, for a little context, before I got here, I took my dog for a walk and we walked out the back door and we paused and I said, do you want to go this way or that way? And she said that way, I want to go through the back door yard, like the, the neighbor's yard, because Woodland Drive is dangerous. She didn't say that, but it was clear that that's where she wanted to go. <laughs> um, so when the dog knows that Terrace Drive is safer than Woodland Drive, I would ask that maybe the the community knows and the council knows that uh, that's obvious. We need a safer place on Woodland Drive for families, for children, and for dogs. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Anna Sifkin. <laughs> um, I'm Anna Seifkin. I live at 19 Woodland Drive. Um, I've been here for about 10 years since 2013. Um, I'm chair of the Mount Lebanon Economic Development Council and during the daytime I work at the Department of Energy. So I'm here tonight to urge and encourage you as commissioners to plan for the installation of more sidewalks in Mount Lebanon in 2014 via the budgeting process with Woodland Drive at the top of the list. I know you evaluated quite a few different streets but we have really been trying to focus on this street in particular for a really long time. So I'm here tonight with several of my neighbors, um, many of whom have, have spoken already. Um, and we've been advocating and meeting with you um, since 2013 when that policy came across. So we've had meetings with neighbors, we've had sessions with individual commissioners, we've sent emails, we've met with principals. Um, I even met with the superintendent to talk about walkability to schools. And in recent months, we've attended at least two or three different commission meetings. We've sent additional emails and we worked with the ESB to create a new set of policy language uh, that was actually not really taken into consideration. So in fact, my daughter, Ruby Seifkin, who's a former junior commissioner and now in her sophomore year at University of Maryland, wrote a story in fourth grade about how she didn't understand why there weren't sidewalks in front of our house. And I'm happy to share that text with you if you'd like it. So I've mentioned that my street is Whitland Drive. And it's a very busy collector street. It is entirely car focused uh, with hundreds of vehicle trips per week to and from Foster Elementary. 
So we get both the to and the from based on the way they flow traffic to foster. And yet dozens of people and their dogs, their families traverse the road every single day of the year through the snow, through the weather. Needless to say, safety is a major concern and it's a huge risk. So in the last few years, there have been almost, there's been almost a complete turnover to younger families with kids who are walking to school. So it's risky for them. So the cars scoot up and down every morning, so much so that my dog, uh, my husband and my dog uh, walk in the morning. We time it out so that we specifically go during the times when the cars aren't going to be there. We know what the window is. So in fact, a neighbor noted recently that someone might actually have to almost die on Woodland Drive to get the municipality's attention. And I remember that that happened in February of 2021 um, because we mentioned that we often have to jump off the road to avoid, avoid cars. Uh, one of our neighbors ended up in a manhole uh, breaking several ribs near the lower part of the road that we call death curve, the curve of death. Um, he was very lucky. So um, any of you, and I know I've said this before, if you'd like to come and sit on my front porch between 8.15 and 8.35 in the morning, or between 3.20 and 3.45, Monday through Friday, you'll get to see what I'm talking about. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say how disappointed I am that the citizen comments were not incorporated into the recently repassed 2013 policy um, that was brought to you all and approved. So the amended policy remains a significant barrier to installing sidewalks. So with the updated version, it was not posted online with much notice. There was no opportunity really for, for comments or for additional amendments. There wasn't any transparency to that process. Um, and since the policy was established about 10 years ago, there has been an, only a 5% increase in sidewalks from 63 to 68% in 10 years. So we really think of it as the sidewalk uh, barrier policy. Um, and it, now that it's been renewed, it remains a major impediment to the sidewalk construction. That 100% participation requirement is a steep challenge, which we are willing to face, but we do feel that it remains very stringent, especially since the same set of requirements have not been put on residents who have the luxury of inheriting sidewalks that already exist. So I'd also like to note that it's been difficult to watch neighbors in the Hood Ridge neighborhood recently get all of their sidewalks renewed while we still wait. So in closing, I'd like to suggest that you find funding to focus on high risk uh, uh, streets that are in proximity to schools that are collector busy streets like Woodland and we're the ones where you should start. Thank you. Uh, next, Sean Battis. Sean Battis, 448 Jason Avenue. Uh, I'm a current member of the traffic board and representing Ward 5, previous member of the Environmental Sustainability Board. Uh, I was um, kind of one of the key drivers of trying to update the sidewalk expansion policy. Um, I'm happy that it has been expanded a bit, but uh, as previously mentioned, I do think that 100% barrier is still going to be a major hurdle for, for many of the residents of this community that want to see sidewalks installed. Uh, and can use the assistance of the municipality to have that done. Um, recently at the traffic board, this, this past traffic board meeting, we've had uh, a number of uh, different areas come through and talk about the speed of traffic and trying to get uh, traffic calming. Um, the two requests I would ask of the commission, uh, one, um, based on the presentation from Gateway earlier this evening on, on the, the sidewalks, they're not thinking outside the box. Um, Commissioner uh, Rainey mentioned, did you even look at extending the sidewalk into the existing street and trying to shrink, shrink the size of the street down, which would have the effect of narrowing the street and hopefully lowering traffic? Uh, I'm pleased that we've passed a complete streets policy. I'm pleased that we're looking at sidewalks again uh, to improve walkability, um, but we, we need to go beyond whether that's uh, a second opinion from another engineering firm that has more experience in complete streets. Um, that would be a, a nice step to look at. Um, just, just going beyond what, what we're presented with on a regular basis. Uh, the second is, we all know this is going to cost money. Be willing to, to vote for that and, and spend the money. Uh, I love the changes on Arden. I, I got to drive by and see some of those recently, and, and 
that that really will help, right? Those kinds of, of things. They they beautify the neighborhood. They slow the traffic down. Uh, using the sidewalks for that can be uh, you know, a, a great feature for this community. We hear it all the time. The traffic board, you know, resident after resident, we want to be a walking community. We want to be a walking community. It's not safe. We don't feel safe. So please make it safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Appreciate it. Next, yeah, I, I, Elise uh, Hack. Elise Hack. Thank you, Elise Hackey. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for taking all of these uh, bless, you. bless you comments tonight. Uh, my name is Elise Hackey. I live at 820 Ridgeview Drive. And based on some of our interactions over the last year and some of what you've heard here, I think you can probably venture a guess as to what I'm going to talk about. And that is, not surprisingly, walkability and pedestrian safety in Ward 3, specifically Woodland Drive. I think uh, at this point, we can all agree that many residents of this community are expected to accept far too much risk on a daily basis with regard to pedestrian safety and uh, in a walking district. And I thank you for your continued dialogue on this topic. You may recall that I'm a Mount Lebanon native and I grew up in the Lincoln district. I now reside in the Foster district. Um, I love walkable communities and my 14 years away from Mount Lebanon, I lived in State College, New York City and Shadyside. My current Foster neighborhood is the least walkable community I've ever lived in. When I was a student in Mount Lebanon, 100% of my walking route to Lincoln, Jefferson Middle and the high school were lined with sidewalks. On top of that, the intersections that I crossed were controlled with stop signs, traffic signals, and crossing guards. By contrast, my oldest daughter, now a first grader at Foster, has only 6% of her safe walking route lined with sidewalks. On top of that, she is expected to scurry across unmarked and uncontrolled intersections on Woodland Drive, which, by the way, is in complete conflict with the safe walking routes that are published by the school district and the police department. Uh, the, her the terrain, excuse me, is hilly and winding, and the sight lines are poor, like you've heard here tonight. Um, I've spent some time with the traffic board over the last year trying to advocate for stop signs on the basis of inadequate sight lines that clearly was not successful, um, but I do think there has to be some attention paid to traffic control in addition to this sidewalk installation that I'm so thrilled you guys are talking about. I walked the route last year with Michael Haberman and we were jumping into people's front yards as we walked on the quote unquote, again, safe walking route. I'm training for a marathon right now, running Woodland Drive four times a week. And as evidenced by my ankle here, <laughs> I think I can blame this damage on the jumping I do back and forth from the road to someone's yard, to the road to someone's yard because I'm constantly dodging cars at all hours. Um, I think, again, we can do better, right? And I want to thank your board again for the continued time and attention. Um, this is really, I think, maybe the first time in about 10 years that you have the ability to fundamentally change the walkability in our neighborhoods, and I urge you to prioritize this. Um, I was able to listen into some of your discussions at 630, and I couldn't quite hear everything, but I have two thoughts. Um, I liked what I heard from Commissioner Wilson with regard to urgency, and I ask that the board here and the municipality try to earmark some funds in 2024 to get this project started sooner rather than later. And of course, based on the history and the sentiment of my neighbors, I would love to see Woodland Drive uh, prioritized. I heard some of your commentary about the sidewalk installation and the proximity to the road and um, to some of my prior commentary. I would also ask that you all think through um, traffic calming studies that might be applicable uh, for Woodland Drive to further improve safety and traffic flow, of course, um, because while sidewalks would be a huge improvement, we still have some problems with the intersections um, as it relates to safe walking. Um, but again, I just want to thank you all for your time. I invite any of you to join me. Maybe you can start with Anna on her porch and then meet me in my front yard as we walk with the little kids up to Foster uh, 815 or 315 any weekday. Um, and uh, especially as you consider where to throw your weight with regard to the 2024 and 2025 budget. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Um, that's everybody on the list here. However, we online. So do we have any online uh, folks want to comment?
Hello, yep, is one, thing on? one hand raised. One hand. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, go ahead, please. Can you hear me? Yes. I've never done this before. Hi, my name is Beverly Brown um, and I am a pediatrician in the community. Um, and when I live at 825 White Oak Circle and I have two young children. Um, and when I moved here initially, I did not realize what um, a dangerous street Woodland is. And I would beg, I would say that not only is it a, not a particularly safe road for cars, um, which I experience every day. Um, I drive extra careful on Woodland because of so many um, other cars parked on the side. And like everyone said, the sight lines are terrible and pe people fly through as a cut through on this neighborhood. But I have two children that I would love to be able to have them walk to school. I advocate for children to get the exercise and walk to school, but I will not let them mm -hmm. because I am too afraid with um the danger of the walk so i know we've all said uh very similar things i appreciate you listening and i think we we just wanted to come out so that you um as commissioners knew and saw how much we would all benefit from sidewalks um on woodland avenue so thank you and thank you for your comments do we have anybody else online who wishes to speak nobody else has their hand raised all right, so thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Love, one last chance if you wish. No, okay. All right, uh, this concludes uh, citizens' comments. Uh, next item four, Commissioner Swagger Wilson, please. This is for the consideration of the minutes from the adjourned meeting held August 22nd, 2023. I move to approve the minutes. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, item five, Commissioner Flynn, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of final approval of a subdivision plan for the Black Oak Hill project at 397 Old Gilkison Road. Request, uh, request for recommendation for final approval of a subdivision plan. The SIGA LLC is requesting to subdivide the property at 397 Old Gilkison Road into 12 parcels. This would accommodate the Black Oak Hill land development plan submitted by Dysiga LLC to construct 10 single family home, single family attached homes on the property. The planning board recommended final approval of the subdivision plan at its July 18th, 2023 meeting. And a presentation was given at the commission meeting on August 22nd, 2023 by the developer. Mr. President, I move to grant final approval of the subdivision plan for the Black Oak Hill project at 397 Old Gilkison Road. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. I have a six. Commissioner Rainey, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of final approval for the Black Oak Hill Land Development Plan at 397 Old Gilkickson Road. At its meeting on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023, the planning board voted in favor of a motion to recommend final approval for the Black Oak Hill Land Development Plan. The developer presented the project to the commission at the August 22nd, 2023 meeting. Um, let's see, the SIGA? The SIGA LLC has submitted the Black Oak Hill plan to construct 10 single family attached homes on approximately 2.7 acres located at 397 Old Gilkickson Road in the R3 zoning district. Single family attached dwellings are a use by right in the R3 zoning district. The developer has requested the following modification to the code chapter 16 subdivision of the land development Seldo. A modification to section 805.9 related to sidewalks. The developer is requesting to not install sidewalks on the old Gilkison Road side of the property due to site topography and the location of the property boundaries in relation to the right of way. Sidewalks will be provided on the Gilkison Road side of the property. A modification to section 707 to provide the required shade trees within the lot frontage on Old Gilkickson Road in lieu of planting trees within the right-of-way due to limited space between the right-of-way line and the cartway. The shade trees planted on private property will, maintain, will be maintained by the property owners. 
I move to grant the requested modifications to section 805.9 and section 707 and grant the final approval to Black Oak Hill Land Development Plan conditioned on the execution and approval of the required development agreement conditioned upon receipt of the necessary permits from outside agencies and conditioned upon receipt of the required financial securities within 60 days. Second. Motion been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? I have a comment. I, I'm still going to maintain that I would really like to see you move the driveway a little bit away from the love fence. You know, when I looked at, drove it, walked it, did all of that, it seems like a fairly small concession. And it, we don't have the right to require you to do that, understandably. But being good neighbors is, you know, always a good thing to do. So moving it ever so much, um, I think would be worth your while and, and would help them. So that's all. Well, I, 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 it, it's... The solicitor is going to whack me under the table, but my thought is, I mean, I'm okay with the requested modifications. We've approved stuff like this before. However, in deference to, and let's say, you know, the, you know, the love's plea to say, is there anything that can be done? And about the only way I can do that is by voting no. I just don't know by wanting to say yes to one and don't. To item two, but uh, that's 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 where I am. Where I mean, the other stuff to me of sight lines or lot lines, whatever. But I just this one, I just have to vote no on. I, I decided to vote no as well, based on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. If you're going to vote no, you have you have to produce a decision that explains why you're voting no and cites to the ordinance. If you think you're going to vote no, say that. That's the order. And we'll work it out. Sure. All right. So, so like on the advice of the solicitor is we should be tabling this. Now, how from a standpoint of make a motion. Make table. a motion to table. All right. I'll make a motion to table. Second. Second. Okay. The motion is on the tabling. So in all those in favor of the motion to table, say aye. 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 Any uh, opposed? Okay. The motion to table carries. Uh, five to nothing. Now, given that this action has been tabled, does so that mean? I have a motion to take a second here. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, should I give that to one of the commissioners? Just go ahead I'll, and do that. I'll make, a, mo I'm make a motion to table item number seven related to the executing of a development agreement for stormwater operations and maintenance agreement with the SEGA. I'll say second. Moved and, moved and second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposed? All right. That motion carries five to nothing. Okay. Item eight. Commissioner Swagger Wilson, please. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the consideration of a Brick Streets policy. Over the past several years, the Historic Preservation Board has worked to develop a preservation policy for the Brick Streets in the community. Mount Lebanon's brick streets are part of its heritage and contrib contributed strongly to its National Historic District Register designation on our key historic and aesthetic feature of our community. The commission has received input from the Historic Preservation Board. Researchers at Carnegie Mellon University, municipal staff and engineers, community residents and local experts in other municipalities who have tackled brick street preservation. The commission has discussed the policy several times in discussion session over the past year. I move to adopt the Brick Streets policy. Second. The motion is moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Item nine, Commissioner Flynn, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration of commencement of pension benefits. Mount Lebanon sponsors three defined pension benefit plans for their employees. General employees, police, and firefighters. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's Department of Auditor General requires that all benefit commencements for the police pension plan be approved by the commission. It also recommends that all benefit commencements, regardless of plan type, be approved by the commission. The employee, uh, employee detail below uh, has, been, has requested benefit commencement commensurate with the terms of their respective pension plans. Lauren Schultz, general employees, uh, start date is 9-1-2023. I move to approve benefits benefit commencement for Lorena 
Schultz. Second. Motion is moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Nothing beyond thank you very much for your service and best of luck on the next adventure. And we wish a long and healthy retirement. All those in favor signify by, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries the NMC. Item 10, Commissioner Rainey, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Consideration to purchase a 2024 Jacobson GP400 Greens mower from Baker Vehicle Systems, Inc. This mower will replace the existing 2018 Greens mower. The existing Greens mower will be converted to a T mower. The current T mower is a 2013 converted Greens mower. Jacobson GP400 is $47,968.50 and is in accordance with the Omnia purchasing contract number 20470. Due to supply chain delays, this item will not be available until 2024. It will be ordered this year and sufficient budget and funds will be carried over to next year. I move to authorize purchase of a 2024 Jacobson GP400 mower from Baker Vehicle Systems, Inc. in accordance with the Omnia purchasing contract 2470 at a total cost of $47,968.50. Second. The motion has been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? I'm going to make the same comment I make every time we discuss any kind of fleet or vehicle purchase. We didn't have any options to consider related to hybrid or electric. They came after I asked for them, uh, which was just a few days ago. So we should get this stuff and we should have time to review it. Also, the information I got, which is from the company that supplies the company we get for, was different than what we got in the email. So I think we should at least take some time to review that stuff. There are hybrid and electric vehicles available that do the same thing and we should talk about rather than just popping something on an agenda and voting for it. We passed a climate resolution that we how many vote how many who has key Ian, how many vehicles have we voted on since the beginning of this year since we passed that climate resolution? I can't give you an exact number. How many? Does anyone know? It's like 10 or 12. And nobody here, not a single commissioner, has voted no on any of those, even though we have a climate resolution which says we're supposed to reduce our emissions. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing from this entire body that no one wants to vote no on any of these items. It's really silly. Everyone says they want to. Everyone says they're for reducing things like emissions. And they talk a good game about caring about climate policy, but no one on this panel cares. Nobody. So I take offense to that. I was going to vote no on this. But now with that very confrontational, almost attack or threat, I'm really conflicted again. I will follow my conscience and I will vote no on this because I would like to see some more electrical vehicles being discussed. But in the past, Craig, as you know, every time that this is brought up, and you have, to your credit, you've brought this up every single time. And staff has said that they need some time to evaluate the infrastructure and they're doing that and they will get us some electric options. They're working on it. And I believe them. I know it's not fast enough for everyone, but I believe them that they are working on it and they're working towards that. So that's why. That's why you need to I looked at, to I looked at uh, our finance director shaking his head no. Do you have a guesstimate on how many? Six, maybe. Okay, thank you. Six, maybe. Is the lag time the same for the hybrid as it is for the gasoline powered one? Yeah. They haven't been stopped. Ready to roll. But they're significantly more expensive. They are more significantly expensive. more expensive. Yeah. Oh, I I feel, I mean, my duty to the residents and being careful with the residents' money. So I'm going to be voting in favor of this resolution. I may be in the minority, but that's my thought on it. It's a vote. That's exactly right. Get their vote. It's You're right. One, one, one of five. So, all right, any other comments? Otherwise, we'll put this to a vote. All those in favor of uh, this resolution, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, I think, I couldn't do if I heard three yes. So three no's, two yeses. Okay, so the motion fails, uh, two yeses, two uh, three no's. All right. And I'll just add a comment. I might vote yes for it next time. I just need a little more time to look at the options. Okay. All righty. Well, with that exciting finish, we are adjourned. <laughs>